So in this episode, we're gonna be breaking down all the material for both the upper and lower cabinets. Let's get started. So I've already gone ahead and drawn up the cabinet on some 3D modeling software. I have a cut list also that I can view on my tablet. Once I've got that all set aside, I need to set up to make my first cut. I've got two rails that I've joined together with the rail connectors to make one longer rail. You can go to our YouTube channel and find videos on how to join two rails together. So for this first cut, I'm just trying to get a good reference face. To do that, I want to make sure that I've got material on both sides of the blade that helps with that dust extraction. So I'm only going for about a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch. Uh, another thing I can do to make sure that I get that best possible dust extraction, that 90%, is make sure I lower that clear plastic viewing window all the way down to the surface once the saw is on the guide rail. Now I'm all set to make my first cut. So the first piece I'm gonna cut is 36 inches wide by 84 and three quarters inches long. That's wider than the parallel guides can handle, but I'm only cutting one piece, so I don't need that repetitive action that the parallel guides offer. So now all I need to do is just measure off my reference edge that we just cut, 36 inches in two spots. Then all I have to do is line up that splinter guard because I know exactly where that splinter guard lands is exactly where it's gonna cut. So when you're using a long rail or two shorter rails joined together, and you're making one long cut, trying to line up two points can be a challenge sometimes. If I try and move this side, that side will move. And if I go around there, if I move that side, this side will move. So what I do is I get one point lined up, use my saw as an anchor, and now I can go around to that side. This side will not move, then both points are lined up where they need to be. With both ends lined up, I'm ready to make my cut. If I'm cutting something too long and I can't reach all the way across it, I can start my cut, stop, reposition, pick up right where I left off, and I won't see a cut line where I was before. Another one is if you notice, I started cutting with my right hand on the saw. Now I'm repositioning, I'll be cutting with my left hand. Doesn't matter if I'm right or left-handed, because all I have to worry about is pushing the saw along the guide rail. I'm not controlling it left or right. So now I've got my width cut. Uh, I can get rid of this scrap piece, this guide rail, and now we need to worry about squaring up one end and cutting this entire piece to length. So if I was back in the training center, I would usually have another whole station set up for my cross cutting, and then I can go back and forth between the two. But because I don't have the space, I wanna go ahead and cut this to length as it sits right now. So what I typically do is I just have a good quality square, get a shorter guide rail, take my square and I reference it off the already cut parallel edge, line the guide rail up with the square edge, get my saw, make a cut, and I know it's perfectly square. So one of the questions I get a lot is how many cuts can I make before this bag fills up? So I've done about 19 feet. Uh, this bag was completely empty when I started. So if I unzip this, dump it out, you can see that's quite a bit of dust that's not on the floor of my shop or floating around, so I'm bringing it in either. Typically for any cross cuts that I would be doing, I'd go ahead and switch this out to the 48 tooth cross cut blade or fine tooth blade. But because this panel, all the edges are gonna be hidden, I'm not concerned with it. To save time, I'm gonna leave the 28 tooth uh, ripping blade on it. So I've got one end squared. I've made all the measurements. Now I can make a cut to verify that the back panel is square. So with the back panel knocked out, I can go back and look at my cut list. I can repeat the process on this piece. The next several cuts are all gonna be parallel repetitive cuts. So now I can utilize the repeatability of the parallel guides for those cuts. If you wanna know more about the setup, calibration, and use of the parallel guides, you can visit our Festival USA YouTube channel so these first two rips are gonna be 16 inches. So I can go ahead and line this up, get it set. Now I can make my first 16 inch rip.
So as far as the rips go in this piece, we're all done. We've just got one cross cut to do, so we'll mark that as finished. If we look at this piece, all these are gonna be cross cuts first, and then I'll come back later and rip them down the correct width. So just like the previous cross cut, I've all gone ahead and straight line ripped an edge here. I've squared off of that edge to give me a straight edge here. Once I have that cut, I can measure off of that good edge for all my following cuts. And I've gone ahead and switched out to the 48 tooth cross cut blade because that's mostly what I'm going to be doing from here on out. So now that I have all these pieces cut to length, I need to cross cut them to width. To do that, I've actually changed the orientation of my MFT hardware. So typically, with my MFT hardware, I'd be setting up a guide rail going across this direction. But I need more depth of cut to cut this 36 inch piece. So what I've done is I've added a 75 inch rail and I've changed the orientation of my hardware. So now I'm attaching it to the short side of the MFT, which gives me a greater depth of cut. Now it's just a matter of putting my pieces in there, squaring them up, and cutting my final dimensions. So in the previous cuts, I just went ahead and measured out each and every piece, made my cuts, and then moved on to the next one. For a small project like that, that's perfectly fine. But if you're doing a lot of batch cutting or if you're cutting a lot of pieces one right after the other, we have these flag stops for this MFT. I can go ahead and set them up, get them the measurements that I want, and then just when I'm not using them, just flip one out of the way, use the next one. So it just speeds up the process and it makes you much more accurate and efficient. So now that I'm in a more stationary position doing these cross cuts, I can go ahead and hook up to the dust extractor. I've got a Bluetooth module on the CT26. I've got a Bluetooth battery. Now once I've paired them, when I squeeze the trigger, it automatically turns on the dust extractor. Now that I've got the big pieces of the carcass cut down to size, I've ripped them and I've cross cut them, I can start working on some of the smaller piece, like the, the drawer sides. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've rotated the MFT back to its normal position, put the fence rail and everything back on the back rail, and I've got a short 1080 rail on here now because I'm going to be using smaller widths of uh, material. I can set my flag stops, square everything up, and then those pieces will be done as well. So I've gone ahead and removed the clear plastic viewing window and installed the outfeed splinter guard. So that way I've got the splinter guard on the guide rail and also the splinter guard to give me a splinter free cut on both sides. Clean up this edge of the piece of plywood and then we can cut everything to length. So with the flag stop set, I can go ahead and cut these two pieces and they'll be exactly the same length. The next couple cuts I'm going to be doing are three inches wide. Utilizing all the hardware you see here, all I've done is I've clamped another piece of plywood down so that when I slide this piece in, 
and butt it up against that other piece, that gives me exactly three inches to the cut of this board. I've got a flag stop here to lock into place. I've also added a clamp for a little bit extra security. So now I can go ahead and make four repetitive cuts. For the next cut I'm going to make, I'm going to cut two pieces at one time. So that's going to be an inch and a half of material. So I've gone ahead and I've flipped my fence rail up in the vertical position to give me full support of that full inch and a half of material. Another thing I need to do is switch out my flag stops. So the flag stops I had been using, these are the flag stops for the Capex UG stand extensions. This is the actual flag stop for the MFT3. So when I put this on the fence, now I've got full support the whole way down for those two pieces of three quarter inch material. So now I'll just follow the same process. I'll square up one end so that I can cut them to length. So this is the final cut of plywood that we need to do, and this is the cut for the center support of the drawer box. To continue the build, click here, or check this out, and don't forget to subscribe.